after 15 hours of traveling, we finally landed in Seoul, Korea, and I am so excited. We have a busy week at work because I'm leading a workshop or running a workshop of how to build a Slack application on the next generation Slack platform. And that's a three hour code intensive workshop. And there's a lot of moving pieces that go on in that workshop. And I'm working with my other advocates. So we are going to practice right now. Definitely didn't know there is that many like rehearsals that went into developer advocacy and workshops and speeches, but there is, and that's where I'm headed right now. That's a good deal. There's just like 200 of them. Yeah, exactly. My coworkers are based in Asia, North America, and Europe, so getting a chance to meet with them in person for a few workshop dry runs is always super fun. After finishing up with the prep time, we went to grab some Korean barbecue, and I headed back to my hotel room to make some adjustments to my portions. So developer advocates can do a ton of different things. It could be making videos, sometimes it could be coding, but a lot of the times it's like talking to developers. Sometimes it's talking to one developer, 10 developers, 100 developers. So a skill that like I had to develop was like talking to crowds and how to do that in a way that I don't get scared every single time in a way that's easy to understand. And that's like a difficult skill to pick up sometimes, but I have a speaking coach that I brought out for this trip specifically that's been working with me for the last 26, 26 years, almost 27 years. She is a like a 15 year veteran of a radio talk show host. She's a public speaker and she's uh she's my mama. Hi everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Seoul, Korea. Welcome to Seoul, Korea. <laughs> so, Mama, what are the three tips for like speaking public, like public speaking tips that you would give after your 15 years of experience? I would say number one, always put the most interesting part of the story first. It's called a hook. Start with your hook. Uh, don't bury it with a lot of content. Just go ahead and open up with something like uh, there's something exciting going on in Seoul, Korea, and you don't want to miss it. And then always remember that your content is not about you. It's about the consumer. And then uh, number three, I would say just raise an amazing son that takes you to Seoul, Korea so you can talk about stuff she like She loves this. Korean <laughs> culture. Thanks, Mama. So yeah, do all the things that she said and have fun. <laughs> Okay, so my mom's always been telling me to change the way I talk, not only for my YouTube channel, but for work. She's saying that you're not the center of attention, which is interesting because my channel's name is Jeremiah People, so I would think I'm the center of attention. But what she keeps coaching me is that I need to stop thinking of this place as like a chance for me to talk about myself and treat it more of a place to take you along with my experiences. So yeah, that's definitely something that I've been trying to work on for this channel is to be more thoughtful of the audience instead of just thinking about myself. But I also take those same concepts and apply them to work as a developer advocate because at work, we are launching a new line of like products and features for the developer experience to like streamline how you, anyway, we really are proud of like what we built at work, but the messaging shouldn't be all about us. It should be more so, hey, now you can build a Slack app and deploy it in under two minutes. Now you're going to be able to do X, Y, and Z. You, 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 customer, customer, customer. So that's another thing I'm taking into uh, account as I try to become a better communicator, a better public speaker, and a better developer advocate and person who does YouTube. So oftentimes in day in the life, content people in the comments are like, what are you actually doing? Because there's no way you're just prancing around Seoul, Korea for your day job and that's correct. But a lot of times the people creating the content are hesitant to share what they're working on because their companies usually don't want that information like floating around in the public. But for this specific thing that I'm about to do right now, um, I can bring you along because it's going to be a televised interview. So some of the questions that I'm preparing to answer um, on behalf of Slack's developer persona is could you prolong Please briefly introduce Slack. What are the new updates coming in the next generation Slack platform? And what are the new features that are also coming out for all of Slack? So I want to make sure that I have like a good understanding of everything that's going on in Slack, everything that's going on for Slack developers, the features that are coming out so that I can represent Slack accurately, which I think is an important thing. So there's also like 
a ton more questions in this document that I just got sent over. So I'm going to be preparing for those. So that's just one part of what I do as a developer advocate. So after I'm done going through these interview questions for the um, interview, I'm going to switch gears and start looking at the code because we also have a coding workshop that we're doing uh, a few hours after the interview. Because sometimes you get those empty stares and you know you're not explaining something correctly and it doesn't feel great. So I'm going to try to tweak up some of my verbiage, tweak up some of the codes so that we can have a better workshop experience for the people attending tomorrow. So I've changed shirts and it is about time to head over to do the media day interview. And then after that, we're going to head over and get the workshop done. So uh, I think I'm ready to get this interview. I'm excited. I'm pumped and I'm ready to go. Let's go. This is my first time doing a technical interview where I don't speak the language and I need someone to translate. There's oftentimes a lot of questions of how do I get started or where can I go for more information? And we have a lot of teams that are in place to answer your questions in the Slack community, Slack forum. So if anyone has questions about how they can build or how they can automate their working lives, uh, please reach out to us there because we love answering questions. working on let me know if this is right is it shonen jeremiah and mira is that how you say it <laughs> we're close i'll get there one day <laughs> head back over into our terminal and paste it in and just like that we have successfully connected our slack cli to our workspace very fancy it went well i think it went yeah, good. There's like 50 people. <laughs> there was more than 50 people. There's like no, there's like 60. Really? Everyone was like super engaged. Oh yeah, everyone. Were. Yeah, it was. Slight bit of a language barrier for me. And me. And you. <laughs> Jason speaks Japanese. I, I don't speak Japanese. But, I don't but speak this either. is Korean. We're, <laughs> we're wearing Korea. Um, all in all, would recommend. Hope we come back. Okay, yeah. So we just left the most like beautiful, fun, iconic. What was it? A tea house. Iconic little tea house. Little tea house, and it was amazing, and that matches up with like the whole entire experience of being in Korea and working here this week. I've learned a lot about the culture over like one week. I know you're an expert on Korean culture, <laughs> but I think the, like, the, the craziest thing that I wasn't expecting was like the respect they have for people. Mm. Like at the start of a conversation, they bow. Mm -hmm. The middle of a conversation, they bow. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the conversation, they, they bow again. And like the bow goes deeper depending on how much they respect. So like when like the big boss, the regional manager came in, they would deep bows. All deep the way bows. down there. I don't think it's um, so much something that they do here in Korea. Respect isn't something that you give or do. It's a lifestyle and it's incorporated in every aspect of their life from how they dine to how they walk to, to how, how they, they dress to how they dress it's a very respectful culture and i have enjoyed it very much and if you ever ever get an opportunity to come to south korea do not hesitate that's one of the things that like i'm really happy about like software engineering was really cool i spent a lot of time learning how to code so i could become a software engineer and that was very fun work but what was a lot more fun was being a developer advocate. Like the software engineering skills are important, but as a developer advocate, I got to meet and experience a lot of different cultures around the world of people who I would have never have talked to as a software engineer, but as a developer advocate, I can talk to them, I can help with them, I can learn their culture and just seeing that that aha moment. <laughs> that aha moment. That aha moment I think for it's people. a Dr. Seuss moment. Um, Dr. Seuss has a famous quote. And I think uh, getting into this career can help you live it out. And it's, oh, the places you will go. Gosh. And as an, yes, as a developer advocate, advocate sure. oh, the places you will go and oh, the experiences you will have. And that's the experience for this video. Of course, <laughs> I'm going to have a ton more experiences. So if you want me to make more videos about the experiences I'm having as a developer advocate, you want product reviews, tell me what you want in the comments. And outside of that, we'll see you on the next one. And if you want his mom to come, Show's back for that as well. <laughs> All right, we're out of here. See ya.